don't even ask how I have my uh, my phone mounted right now because I don't want to talk about it. Anyway, um, first things first, I just found out today that I have strep throat and I'm not happy about it. Anyway, so for those of you who care or who may not know, um, Roughly like December of 2016, um, I was approved for weight loss surgery. More specifically, the uh, vertical sleeve gastrectomy, commonly known as VSG surgery. So uh, that type of VS. No, that type of weight loss surgery, uh, to me, for my situation, and also just kind of in general, is the least invasive, um, because, well, for a few reasons. First off, it's done laparoscopically, which if you don't know, um, laparoscopic procedures are just done by basically, um, expanding your torso with gas and then three I think tiny little incisions are made in your um, torso and then the surgeon puts like really long instruments in and does the surgery that way uh, your healing time is obviously like significantly reduced because you're not your whole stomach's not cut open um, anyway so that's just kind of the backstory. Uh, I was approved, like I said, I think it was December of 2016. Um, and that was after a, roughly eight months of clearances, which are required by, it's kind of like dual requirements. My insurance company at the time has very strict requirements as well as um, the facility I guess the, my surgeon's requirements, which are laid out by the uh, hospital that he is, or the medical group that he's associated with. So, um, I was cleared and basically right as I was set to schedule a surgery date, I found out I was pregnant with Everly, so obviously I couldn't have surgery. And unfortunately, your clearances do have like a statute on them. So uh, depending on what type of clearance it was, the max is generally like two years before they expire, which would mean that if you wanted to continue with surgery, um, you basically have to redo all of your clearances. So in the last two years we've had a lot of changes Pat started a new job so we now have different medical insurance um, two years had elapsed well almost two years had elapsed it was like I don't know a year and a half by the time I decided to start the process again so um, basically all of my clearances had expired by that time so I pretty much had to start over like brand new um, which is what I decided to do in like the end of September, beginning of October of 2018. And my new insurance, which is uh, Aetna, from what I understand and what I've been experiencing, they're a pretty good insurance, but they're extremely, extremely strict on their requirements and clearances for approval for bariatric surgery. So, Basically, I just wanted to explain what my insurance required, which is extremely similar to what my old insurance required. Those requirements are, I don't want to say general, but in my area and in my experience, they were the same for both insurances. So basically, depending on your surgeon and what hospital or medical group they're affiliated with, they, in conjunction with the insurance, have their own requirements. So, 
my surgeon gave me a list of, I don't know, I'll find the paper and I'll like post a picture up or something. Um, there are numerous things that could be required based on your specific uh, medical situation. So aside from me being overweight or morbidly obese, I am otherwise healthy. I don't have any chronic medical issues. I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have diabetes. I'm not pre-diabetic. Um, I mean, aside from like my back pain and stuff, but that's all basically weight has contributed to that. So otherwise, like I'm not on any medication or anything like that. Um, I'm just overweight. So clearances for me were really easy. Um, easy in the sense that I didn't require any follow-ups after I did the clearances. I just did what was required and that was it. Um, so I'll just quickly kind of go through my experience and what I can remember off the top of my head because I'm driving home. So there are different facets to your, to your, um, clearances. They kind of want to hit a bunch of different, um, they want to hit a bunch of different areas, I guess. I don't really know how to explain it. So... Um, medically wise, you are required to have basically like a, um, like a CBC blood work of blood work done. They test for cholesterol, um, like literally everything. You just have a complete workup done of your blood work. Mine was fine. I, my vitamin D was barely deficient so um they prescribed me vitamin d which i take twice a week when i remember and it's i think it's like 50,000 milligrams or something um other than that everything was fine my levels of whatever they were checking for were all in the green so i'm good um blood work was the easy thing depending on your insurance um you may be required to, you may be required to, um, partake, I don't know. You may be required to, I'm trying to think of the right word for it and I can't, I don't know. You may be required to attend, I guess we'll say, um, anywhere from three to six months of it's called medical weight management. Basically, you um, you visit your primary care physician, which could be your surgeon or your actual primary care physician, whether it's a doctor or a nurse practitioner or whatever. You basically visit them once a month and the insurances are very strict with making sure that your appointments are spaced a minimum of 30 days apart. So you basically, um, I have a, oh, my folder's in the trunk. So you get this packet when you decide that you wanna get some information and have a consultation about surgery. Your surgeon, again, this is my experience. So my surgeon, I should say, provided me with a packet of information regarding the different types of weight loss surgery and also laid out the requirements based on my my like my personal medical situation so in that packet there's a bunch of resources for um contacts for the clearances and recommendations and stuff like that so uh i forget where i was going with that anyway i'll just go back to my clearances so um oh Oh, 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 your insurance requiring medical weight management. Sorry. So in that packet, there are templates that the uh, surgeon requires. Well, it's like the insurance requires, but the uh, your medical group will type it up however they want to present it to you. And it's basically just to go over your obesity history, um, what you've done in the past to try to lose weight. Have you been on Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, like... Um, have you hired a personal trainer? Have you been on a, on a medical, um, medically supervised diet? You know, whatever. Have you tried like shakes and stuff like that? So 
during this time, you cannot have a net weight gain. Like they do understand that your weight will fluctuate month to month, but over your three to six months of medical weight management, you absolutely cannot have a net weight gain at the end because you're basically immediately um, disqualified from surgery. They basically want to see that you're being during this during the course of your medical weight management. They want to see that you're following a you're sticking you're following and sticking to a diet, and you're just not diet and exercise and you're just not losing the weight the way that you should be. So um, you basically go to your doctor every month, you get weighed, you go over your last couple weeks of diet, have you been keeping a food journal, um, what type of diet are you doing, what are you sticking to, they may suggest one based on knowing you and your medical history, um, like high protein, low carb, or I don't know, something like that. So they want to talk about, they also want to see that you're trying, you know, uh, in addition to dieting, you're also, um, that you're trying to be more active than you currently are or were. They want to see that you're logging your food journals. Food journals are extremely important and that's just something that I am terrible at. I shit the bed all the time. I have my fitness pal, I've tried an actual journal, like, I'm just terrible with writing things down or keeping track, like, at the end of the day, I can probably sit and figure out what I ate, but, like, measuring food and stuff like that, I'm terrible at, which I have to work on because I won't have a choice after surgery. Anyway, um, and that's the same thing for anywhere from three to six months. Even if your insurance, if there's a case where your insurance does not have a requirement for medical weight management, um, the medical group that you decide to have your surgery through probably has some type of requirement themselves. So, I mean, me personally, I go, th I'm going through Penn Medicine, Pennsylvania Hospital in Philadelphia, but they're in Jersey and everywhere. So Penn Medicine still requires three months of medical weight management through your primary care physician or your surgeon, even if your insurance does not require any medical weight management. It's very rare that insurances would not require some type of medical weight management because they're the ones that are paying for the surgery. So they want to know that you're serious about it. They want to know that you're trying everything that you possibly could to lose the weight and it's just not working. So I, I do know um, TRICARE, like the military insurance, they actually don't have a requirement for medical weight management, but Penn Medicine still does. So regardless, you have to do a minimum of three months of medical weight management. Um, if you are considering Penn Medicine as your provider. So um, my personal insurance required four months this time around as opposed to six months last time. We just had a different insurance. So um, four months of medical weight management, which you're basically simultaneously doing all of these other clearances at the same time. So I had my first medical weight management appointment October 28th, 2018. It was the 28th or the 29th because my appointments, my consecutive appointments have always been like the, the 28th, 29th or 30th, depending on when I could get in and my work schedule and stuff. So, um, sorry, I put my steering wheel up like really high so I could record this video. Um, so I had October, November, December, and I just completed my last medical weight management yesterday, Monday, January 28th. That was the very last thing that I had to do. Uh, I finished all my clearances as soon as I could and could get in and get my appointments and everything. Um, that was the very last thing that I was waiting for so that I could submit to the insurance for uh, approval to schedule surgery. I personally didn't have to submit my information to the insurance. My surgeon has a uh, surgery co surgery slash insurance coordinator who has been fantastic. Uh, she's super helpful, very informative. Whenever I have a question, like she knows what she's doing. She's dealt with all the insurance companies. Um, she's always been able to answer my questions and help out. I called her yesterday after my doctor's appointment and just let her know that I finished my last appointment 
and um, wanted to make sure that she had everything that I needed. And I think it was a little easier for me because my surgeon is a part of Penn Medicine, but basically every provider that I've seen for my clearances is also a part of Penn Medicine. So I'm already in their system. They don't have to work, wait for someone to send something over or email or whatever. Everything's there. They can literally just look up my account and pull everything they need. So I talked to her yesterday afternoon. She had everything she needed. Um, and then she sent it off to the insurance. So just backtracking a little bit to um, the rest of my clearances. I did my blood work. I did my medical weight management. In between my medical weight management appointments, I was also required to do a few other things. Um, I had to see pulmonology, which is, uh, if you don't know what pulmonology is, it's just your... Um, your respiratory system your lungs and all that so they basically want to check your your lung function um, to see if you have any undiagnosed asthma or any undiagnosed respiratory issues and it doesn't mean that that would um, mean that you can't have surgery they just need to know so they can treat it especially because you'd be under anesthesia and stuff like that so it, it doesn't mean that you'll be denied you just they need to know so they know if anything happens they know how to treat it um, I saw pulmonology. I actually tried, I scheduled like a lot of my appointments on the same day because they're in the same facility. So I actually saw pulmonology October 28th, like the same day of my um, first official medical weight management appointment. And um, I, she, they did like the spirometry um, test, which is like, they make you like suck in all your air and then blow it out and like the little thing goes up and down um with me that showed some kind of like obstruction like I could breathe fine but like like a slight one one of the, the one of my readings was off so she um the pulmonologist wanted me to have a sleep study done which is super common because a lot of obese people have some form of sleep apnea and again they just need to know if you if you have it so that they can treat it while you're under anesthesia. So, um, I had to go to, I had to go have a couple other breathing tests done just because the reading they were getting from the one in the office was a little off. So they wanted me to have further testing just to see if it was just off or if I actually had any type of issue. So I went to, I had like a pulmonary function testing it's called done I don't know if anyone's ever had it done they basically put you in like that chamber it's like a you sit in like this plexiglass chamber and they have you breathe into a bunch of different things and they measure everything like all of your lung functions your lung volumes everything and then they just report back to your pulmonologist to let you know their findings if they saw anything if they think you have asthma or anything like that um once I went through that second step of pulmonary function testing I was fine I was completely cleared I didn't have I don't have asthma anything like that like it, I guess it was just kind of like a fluke when I took the first test in the office but I did have to do a sleep study which I again is very common they just they specifically want to know if you have any type of like if you need to use a CPAP machine or anything like that um I had my sleep study done at like an outside lab it was called Advantage Sleep Study which it was a terrible experience because when I, my appointment was at like 9.45 at night and when I got there, I was already exhausted and it usually takes them like an hour, hour and a half. I've had one done before. So they, like an hour, hour and a half to hook you up to everything, get you ready, get you settled. I got there at like 9.30. They, they had this new lady there. She was like, oh yeah, I've been doing this for like 13 years. It took her like three hours of me up. I, I didn't go to bed until almost one o'clock in the morning. I was fucking exhausted. And, um, I finally get to sleep. They woke me up at like 4.45 in the morning. So they only monitored me for like three, three, three and a half hours. It was fine. I didn't have any, I don't even think I got into like a deep sleep to see if I had like, if I needed a CPAP or whatever, my heart function, like everything was fine. Anyway, my sleep study, I was cleared. My, uh, so pulmonology completely cleared me through the sleep study and the pulmonary function testing. Um, so I was good with that. Blood work was done. Medical weight management was underway. 
uh, pulmonary was done. Um, I had to get cleared by cardiology, which he kind of laughed because he's like, you're like a 30 year old woman. There's nothing wrong with you. You're fine. I'm going to clear you. I went, he did an EKG. Um, he checked me out. He's like, you're fine. Like there's nothing wrong. Cardiology I was good with. Um, I also had to have something done called an upper GI. It's basically like a moving x-ray of your GI tract to make sure that um, you don't have any type of like uh, blockages or anything like that. And basically what they do is I went to, you go to a radiology place. I went to South Jersey Radiology because that's my insurance covers it. Um, and you, it's kind of like a standing x-ray like that, you know, when you have, when you have an x-ray and you lay on the table they have you lay flat and like your feet are down here they basically do that but then they move the table up so and then they kind of they make you move around and they're watching they make you drink i had to drink barium which is like that white chalky stuff and something else it was like a fizzy something um they made me drink the fizzy stuff first and then the barium and the fizzy stuff just like expands everything and they want to make sure that everything goes down the way it's supposed to um so they literally just have you stand on this the x-ray table and they move you around they move it around they tell you to like hold your breath and stuff like that it was super easy uh again i was fine with that i they call it gerd i think is like the um medical term for like indigestion or whatever i don't know i mean i get heartburn if i eat like spicy stuff but whatever again no big deal gi cleared me i was fine um you so all of those things were covered like by medical insurance you, they're just appointments my my insurance requires referrals which was super easy to do through like my pen medicine i just go on and tell them who when my appointment is who i want to see what it's for they send off the um referral the approval and then like it's done i don't have to really do anything else so you also have to have a psychological evaluation like literally I had to go to Hall Mercer and talk to a psychologist. It was really weird. That is not covered under your insurance, depending on your insurance in some cases, but they're very limited to uh, which insurance companies I guess they work with, but none of my insurances covered it. So I had to pay twice for this and it was $275, whatever. So I went to my appointment. They basically just want to make sure that you're mentally ready for surgery because everyone's like, oh yeah, it's just so easy to have weight loss surgery. It's really not like, everyone's like, oh, you're just taking like the easy way out, you know, just work out and, and stuff like that. Like, okay, yes, I get it. But like for me personally, I know that I need something as drastic as literally cutting a piece of my stomach off because that's just my personality and that's just who I am, like whatever. Anyway, it's not an easy, like, as you can tell, this is a 23 minute video already and I'm not even done with the clearances. So anyway, you have to see a psychologist and they basically talk to you to make sure that you're mentally prepared for surgery, that you have a good support group because it is a, not only like a physical change, but it, it will, you know, you can't do the, it's, it's more of like a, a learned behavior too. Like you can't do the things you did before. You can't eat the stuff you ate before. Um, even just like going out to restaurants and stuff like you just kind of have to learn how to you have to relearn how to do everything and adjust to your new way of life I guess so I don't know I think that was like maybe 35 minutes or something and then basically they write up a report to say if they think that you're cleared as as is like you know as you are or if they would like you to have like a follow-up appointment or something to discuss it further but um I was good she called me I think like a week later and told me that everything was clear on her end she would clear me for surgery and I was good so that was the first thing that was not covered under insurance um I, th I think that's I think that's everything I have to look at my paper, but for right now, if I have anything to add to it, I will, but I think that's everything. Um, that's everything for like clearances. So basically if you get all that stuff out of the way, you, oh, 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 no, it's not. I'm sorry. So if this is your very first time, um, like looking into having surgery, my pen medicine requires you to go to an information session 
and it's held by the surgeon or one of the surgeons who actually performs the surgery and um usually like their bariatric coordinator or like their their um scheduler uh, mm, coordinator my surgeon has a fantastic one her name is linda and she's like the nicest ever and she's just awesome so um during the information session they basically it's an information session you can ask questions there are patients that have had surgery that are scheduled for surgery that are like pre post-op like different different amounts of times like maybe someone who has had their surgery five years ago and who is just had it eight days ago like I, I don't know there's you know a bunch of different people there and they're good for resources but he the well, I say he but my surgeon is a guy so they basically go over the different types of surgery um obviously some of the risks that are involved with them what you can expect weight loss wise if you stick to their program um and basically just goes over all of the technical stuff asks if anyone has any general questions um gives a lot of good resources for information for you to do your own research which is super important because you know you do have a consultation with the surgeon but it's they'll make their recommendation on what type of surgery they think you should have based on you and your specific situation but it is up to you to do your research to see what you feel would be the best fit for you and your lifestyle and you know depending on how heavy you are and you know there are a bunch of different factors that play into it so um information session is required as well as a support group so i didn't have to attend an information session this time around because i had already attended one and those don't really expire because it's just an information session that is more of a pen medicine requirement it's not an insurance requirement so the support group same is also a pen medicine requirement it is not an insurance requirement it's kind of the same as the information session but it's more it's a support group it's basically what it says that it is it's more geared toward people geared toward people who are post-op who have had the surgery and again people who are two weeks out of surgery eight weeks out of surgery five years out of surgery like it's just to go you know ask questions and hey did, how did you guys feel about this or what did you experience here and there and, you know just support group so that is required you're required to attend one they would like for you to attend more i probably won't but who knows i, I went to my one and that was it we'll see um so i got everything done from october to january and um, like I had to wait for cardiology because they were booking like two, two and a half months in advance or something. So I finished everything. My very last medical, like I said, my very, very last appointment was yesterday, the 28th. So basically right now I'm at the point where I am waiting for insurance approval. They could come, they could come back and say, oh, we want you to do these additional steps or they'll just come back and say, yep, you've done everything we've asked. You're approved. Um, you can go ahead and schedule surgery whenever your surgeon, whenever their schedule allows. When that happens, when you get approval for surgery, you then have a few more things that you have to do, but they aren't necessarily clearances. You, um, you have to attend a nutrition class, which again is not covered by insurance. You have to pay for it. It's $200. And I will also, um, when surgery day gets closer, I'll have to go on a thousand calorie diet, I believe two weeks pre-op and then seven to 10 days pre-op, you have to go on like a liquid diet. And that's basically to just shrink everything for surgery to make it easier for, um, for them to find everything when they get inside. Um, I'm going to cut this short really quick. I have to pick Lex up and I will pick back up where I left off later.